Dear students, up till now we have looked at how to incorporate the molecular weight, the peptide sequence tags and the in silico comparison into your protein sequence search. All of these things individually can give you some very useful information. However, we need to integrate all of these small algorithms into a bigger and more robust algorithm which can give you a very nice identity on your protein. So let's take a look. So MS1 gives you the intact mass, MS2 gives you the peptide masses, you can extract peptide sequence tags and of course compare the in silico and in vitro spectra. But you can not up till now combine them in a way to magnify or create a synergy between each of these methods. So in this module, I'm going to integrate all of them into a single protein sequence search engine. This will help you to overcome the weakness of a specific method by leveraging the strength of some other technique. Let's take a look. So in this flowchart, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide how to integrate each of these three methods that I just mentioned to you. So first of all, you start from here, you get the experimental peak list, right? And some parameters to search this peak list. So this peak list typically comprises of MS1, that is the intact mass, and MS2, that is the fragment mass. If you want, you can tune the molecular weight of the protein as well, depending upon any measurement error, or most of the times, you can skip this step. Next, you select a protein or peptide from database. So this database can be your UniProt or SwissProt. So once you have selected a protein, you compare the molecular weight of this protein. Compare the molecular weight of this protein from the database with the mass from the MS1. Next, if you have a match, if, this, if these molecular weights in red, if they match, then you can create a score. So if you have a score for the intact molecular mass, which is good, it can be quite useful. However, it may not be good enough to give you a final say on the protein. So you proceed and you construct the peptide sequence tags or the PSTs from the MS2. So peptide sequence tags are generated from the MS2 and then you search these PSTs with the same protein. So if your PSTs exist in this protein sequence, then you can be more sure that the protein matches the in vitro experimental mass and also it contains some PSTs that are obtained in MS2. So you are becoming more and more confident in your matching. Now, if these PSTs, they match, then what you do is you generate the in silico fragments of this protein again. Okay. So once you have generated the in silico spectra, then you can compare this in silico spectra with the MS2. So, if the in silico spectra also matches very nicely with the MS2 spectra, then you can be extremely confident that you have a good candidate protein. Of course, during this process, you have to create scores at each step here, here, and here. So, these three scores 1, 2, and three, you have to aggregate them and then arrive at a final list of candidate proteins. So in this way, you can integrate the molecular weight, the PSTs and in silico fragmentation into one big system that can help you to identify proteins. Of course, once you have processed this protein, then you have to select the next protein from the DB and repeat this entire process again. So in this way you will have scores for all the proteins in the database. 
So in conclusion, by integrating the molecular weight, PSTs and in silico spectral comparisons, you can have a very robust score for an overall identification. More so, you will need now a composite scoring scheme. By composite, I mean that scores for individual components and gives you an overall score towards protein identification.